Ooh. Oh, hey everybody, Teching here. I'm sorry for the lack of content lately, guys, and I know I know most of you are cool with it, but I'm so used to churning out content for you guys that if more than two or three days go by and I haven't uploaded anything, I start getting a little bit antsy, but um, that's going to improve uh, the situation at work. We hired a lot more people, so uh, I should have to not work as many hours, so I should be able to make more content, but for right now, you know, with uh, and I have to go to work later today, too, but for right now, you know what? I just kind of want to talk about something I enjoy. Hey, 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 whoa, whoa, no, this is actually relevant because we are talking today about Boa Hancock's fruit, the Meadow Meadow no Mi, or the Love Love fruit, and a big part of this fruit is that she is very attractive, and a big part about being attractive in One Piece is that you have huge knockers. I'm not the one that decides this shit, this guy is the guy that decides this shit. Right, so, uh, Hancock's Devil Fruit actually seems pretty basic at first, it seems straightforward anyway. Uh, anybody that looks at Hancock that has lust in their hearts uh, will be turned to stone by the power of her love love fruit. Uh, that doesn't seem that odd. It's actually based off of the Medusa, you know, looking upon the eyes of the Medusa will turn them to stone, you know? Um, but if you actually look at Boa Hancock's fruit, there's actually a couple of interesting notes, like footnotes about it, and uh, there's techniques that she uses at Marine Ford, which kind of render the original premise of her fruit sort of like not irrelevant, but it's just like, why would she use this technique when she could just use this technique that creates the exact same effect with uh, less of a condition needing to be required? So, let me break this down. The first technique that we see Boa Hancock use, and the technique that apparently makes her so feared as one of the seven warlords of the sea, is her Mero Mero Mero, which allows her to shoot a love beam at her opponent. I know, this is a very fucking girly fruit. Actually, I just realized, the whole premise of this fruit is love, and the there is a devil fruit that is shaped like a heart, but it's not this one. You missed your, you missed your chance there, Oda. I mean, I know the op op no me, that's, you know, the heart, like the human body, so that's why that's shaped like that, but come on now. If there was any fruit that was going to be shaped like a heart, you'd think it would be the fucking love love fruit. Anyway, whenever this love beam comes in contact with either one opponent or maybe a group of opponents, uh, anybody that's viewing uh, Hancock with a lecherous eye, anybody that's that has lust in their heart or impure thoughts, as she puts it, for Hancock herself immediately gets turned to stone. And this is actually kind of a killer ability because I don't know if you guys know this, but once you get turned to stone, um, you can't do anything. Not even blink. Don't even blink. Blink and you're dead. Okay. Okay. That's, that's, did anyone get that reference? That was... Okay. Anyway, um, once you're a stone statue though, Hancock can literally just walk up to you and just like tip you over and you shatter and you're broken and you can't be put back together. Um, all the king's horses and all the king's men can never put together this poor bastard again, essentially. Um, but th that's the key though. You have to have lust in your heart. You have to have some impure thoughts to Hancock, to the user of this fruit. Already, we have a little bit of an issue here. So with that being said, with that being the basis, there are some people that would automatically just be immune from this power. One of which being Luffy, that was revealed in the story, and that's why Hancock kind of fell over, uh, head over heels in Gaga with Luffy, because Luffy was the one man that was able to resist her love. Um, it's just that if you don't have any lust in your heart, or if you're very oblivious to it like Luffy is, uh, you can be immune to this ability. Um, another thing, and, and another strong hat that would be completely immune to this power from Hancock would be Chopper. Chopper is not attracted to human women, so he would be immune to the love love beam too. Also, somebody else that you might not have thought of that could be immune to this fruit, uh, somebody that is blind, i.e. Fujitora. He doesn't know what Hancock looks like, so it's kind of hard to lust after her. Although, not impossible to fall in love. That's the weird thing about this fruit. Despite it being called the love love fruit, uh, being in love with somebody doesn't seem to be the thing that actually triggers it. It's not love, it's lust. It's like, oh my god, I want her on me now! It's that! that actually changes you into stone, even if it's just a little bit, even if it's just like a moment where, because we saw that in Impel Down, we saw that when Hancock was being, um, uh, you know, interrogated and undressed by Domino, who is a female, uh, which we don't know what her sexuality is, but even women we've seen in the story get a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, like, oh, she's so cute, or oh, she's so attractive, anything impure, anything that's just lustful, going after her beauty, or just ogling her appearance, that's the thing 
thing that actually triggers it and turns the person to stone. If it's somebody that was like in genuine love with Hancock, not like from a lust perspective, just like I love you and I want to spend the rest of my days with you, um, regardless of your appearance or regardless of anything like that or your horrible fucking personality because Hancock, I did a whole discussion video about that. You check it out here, but I'm not a, f her personality is still shit to anybody that's not Luffy. Um, but yeah, that, that's probably not going to trigger it. Uh, she can also use an ability called Awaken to free people of this stone prison. All she has to do is just kind of like blow a kiss on them, and then they'll be freed from this prison. Okay, so that's already a rather intimidating ability for somebody like Hancock, who is regarded as the most beautiful pirate in the world, and her, uh, her looks are only second only to the mermaid princess Shira Hoshi. But then you start thinking, like, what happens if somebody other than Hancock would have eaten the Love Love fruit? Probably wouldn't have been that effective. Uh, imagine if, like, Kokoro ate it or something. You know, I, yeah, I don't see a lot of men falling head over heels in love with Kokoro. Although, if you want something to really change a character around, Oda actually drew Kokoro when she was younger, and... Yeah, there you go. You're gonna be touching yourself to Kokoro tonight. You're welcome. So yeah, it really makes you realize that there are some Devil Fruits, this one and a few other select ones, that the ability's effectiveness completely depends on the person that eats it. Uh, in Hancock's case, it's her appearance, but in other fruits, it's like knowledge that you have, like the Api Api no Mi. Like I said in the last video, if somebody that's not a doctor eats the Api Api no Mi, it's not going to be as useful as to somebody that does have medical training. If a person that's like a overweight guy that's ugly as sin consumes the love love fruit probably not going to take advantage of the lusty aspects of it all too much because not a lot of people are viewing you with lust um so that's the case there also there are ways to get around it if you're clever enough as we saw with mamonga so when uh hancock shot her love love beam at mamonga and his crew the crew got all turned to stone because they were all going gaga over hancock however mamonga was smart enough to know the ability and he takes out a knife and just stabs him right in the freaking hand, which at the moment removed all senses of lust or any kind of uh, impure thoughts from his body because he was focused on the pain on his hand. So, um, you might not have to go that drastic with it. Momonga really didn't have a lot of time to work with, so the only thing he could think of is stabbing himself in the hand, but you might be able to get around there with just like having a pinprick, like, oh shit, pinprick, and then like, oh yeah, for that brief, for that brief moment when that love love beam was passing over me, I didn't have any lust in my heart. I was too focused on the pain or something like that. So there are ways around it. Here's the thing, though, and here's the thing that doesn't actually make any sense. Hancock has showed other abilities that she can use with the Love Love Fruit that turn the opponent to stone regardless if they show lust for her, regardless if they are even human. Okay, so the first ability we see her use that's an offensive technique uh, is Pistol Kiss. Uh, after she realized that Luffy was unaffected by her Mero Mero Mero, she, like, you know, kissed her finger and that creates a little heart that she could fire like a pistol. Luffy dodges these techniques, but we can assume with later techniques that she uses, anything that gets shot with this little heart uh, bullet will immediately get turned to stone. Other techniques she's displayed are her uh, perfume femur, which allows her to like kick the opponent, and then whatever contact, whatever comes in contact with her leg, whatever she kicks, will immediately turn to stone and then get cracked under the pressure of her actual kick. Um, Hancock has very long legs, so this technique works very good for her. But this is what I mean. It doesn't seem like the person actually has to have lust for her. She can just inflict this, uh, this ability on them directly with physical contact. How do I know this? She uses this technique on pacifistas, which are robots. So unless Hancock's hotness is so transcendent, even robots have a boner for her then I don't see this techniques like her any of her techniques that really should work on them. But maybe how it works is with the Mero Mero no me with the tech I mean not the yeah with the Mero 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 with her love beam technique, she can use this from a distance. Um, but some people can be unaffected. However, if she chooses to directly touch the opponent with her perfume femur or with like her hearts coming in contact them, um doesn't matter if they're humans or an inanimate object, uh, or if they even have lust for her at all, they'll get turned into stone either way. Uh, so that's a pretty cool power, though. The downside with that is that with her Mero Mero Mero, anything that gets covered by the, like, it has a much wider range, so anything that gets caught in this beam, like an entire crew of marines, like 20 or 30 dudes got, like, turned to stone immediately with this technique. With her close-up hand-to-hand combat techniques, uh, it's more limited. Even when she used her per 
perfume femur technique against Marines. It was only the parts of their body that actually came in contact with her leg that actually got turned to stone. It was like this one guy's arm and like half of his neck. And he's like, what are you doing, Hancock? Um, the same thing would happen with uh, uh, Smoker's... I always mispronounce this word. Is it Juddy? Judy? Jut? I, I don't know how it's pronounced, but Smoker's staff, you know, when she kicked it, it's only the tip of it that actually got knocked off there. Um, so, yeah, Hancock will knock off your tips. Um, other techniques that she's displayed are her slave arrow technique, where she kisses her finger again, out pops a giant fucking inflatable heart, and then she can, like, shoot arrows from it, and anything that comes in contact with these arrows will immediately get turned to stone. Uh, she uses this technique uh, against a lot of attacks, like cannonballs or anything rapid fire that's coming toward her. This is her rapid fire technique but once again it doesn't matter if they're if they're inanimate objects like cannonballs or if they're actual people that have lust for her or if they're people that don't have lust for her at that moment um keep in mind we're talking about like a war at marine ford right here i'm sure these soldiers have other things to worry about they're like bleeding and injured uh rather than ogling hancock so when she kicks them i don't think there was immediate lust in their heart at that moment um so th that's that's one thing that's interesting about this fruit is that it, it completely is dependent on the physical appearance of the person that eats it, the person that has to be very lustful or very attractive in order for it to have complete effectiveness. Um, which is funny, actually, uh, Hancock was force-fed this as a child when she was a slave at Marijois. They just kind of fed them devil fruits to be used for their own sick enjoyment. That's the, the world nobles. That's kind of what sick fucks they are there. Um, so that's how she consumed them, which is funny because a lot of her techniques, um, you know, appeal to, like, being a slave of love, you know, some that's going into some BDSM territory, be my love slave. But now I don't want to get into a discussion about Fifty Shades of Grey, so let's just let's just move on here. So that's cool and everything that she has abilities that can kind of override that condition, but we've never really seen her use that ability to their full extent. Like, is there a limit there? Because we've never seen Hancock fight against an opponent. Probably the strongest opponent she's ever directly fought was Smoker. Um, who is a strong dude, but even that fight really didn't go too far. Um, for example, if she was going to use her perfume femur or her slave arrow or pistol kiss against somebody, uh, you know, like, you know, warlord level or even Yonko level, like, would it be that effectual? I also have a theory that the stone effect might not be permanent when she uses her techniques like that. The stone effect might only last for a little while and then that thing goes back to normal. The only thing that actually manages to keep them, um, you know, staying as stone is her, you know, love, love beam technique, which would make sense because that one has a very specific condition you need to fulfill. Um, so yeah, I really just wanted to talk about tits today. I'm not going to lie. Um, but it's also a very interesting devil fruit. I feel when you actually take the time to look at it and the different abilities that it involves and, uh, the person that needs to, you know, consume it to take it to its full effect. Um, but Hey, in that case, Hancock, uh, Hancock lucked out to have that particular fruit fed to her, uh, because I mean, Hey, she, She's hot. I gotta give her that much. I mean, she still has a horrible personality to anybody whose name doesn't start with an L and end with a Oofy, but... Um, and you know what? A lot of people said when I did that, you know, discussion video, I was talking about Hancock's character. Some people were like, well, Matt, of course she has a horrible personality. Of course she's a bitch. Can you blame her? She's been, you know, she was a slave growing up. She was tortured by men. And, and the fucking, uh, the, the Tenryu Obito. So, of course she would have this horrible, bitchy personality. Here's the thing, though. I can understand if she was a bitch towards men or towards strangers, but toward her own people. Here's the kicker. Her sisters, Sanderzonia and uh, Marigold, they were tortured too. Everything that happened to Hancock happened to them as well, and they're, at, they're still at least um, nice to their own people. They still at least care about their own tribe. And Hancock sort of does care about her tribe, but she's still a bitch to them. She'll still do that stupid, like, you'll forgive me because I'm adorable. And also, more importantly, Sanderzonia and Marigold do not kick little fucking puppies, and they do not kick old women out of a castle window, alright? So it doesn't work, I'm sorry, she's a stuck-up bitch unless your name is Luffy. I gotta say it, that's the, that's the fact. If it was completely because if she was a slave, then her sisters would have that same personality, and they don't. So, yeah, maybe it's improved. Maybe her personality is improved. But the la most of the time we see her, she's with Luffy, and she's, like, so innocent and cutesy. But we haven't really seen her without Luffy all that much. So I hope that her personality would improve. But otherwise, she's a bitch. But she has a cool power. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Signing out.